Hello and welcome to another video here at Pragmatic Works. My name is Mitchell Pearson and in this video, we're going to take a look at how to do a moving sum inside of Power BI using visual calculations, so stay tuned. Before we begin, do you want to learn more about DAX or Microsoft Fabric? You can go to prag.works forward slash Mitchell40 and save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription to over 100 classes. Now, on to our video. I've heard and seen a lot of kind of forums and blog posts out there that you can't do a moving sum with visual calculations. And unfortunately or unfortunately, that's just not true. You can do a moving sum. And so what I wanna create here is we're going to use and we're going to leverage this new awesome capability of visual calculations. If you're not familiar with this at all, you definitely wanna take a look at it. Go take a look at my 90 minute YouTube video that's out there on our channel for free and really dive into what are moving calculations and what do they do. But let's take a look at what a moving calculation is. What I wanna do is as my total sales climb, I wanna get a three month moving sum meaning that whenever I look at it, a snapshot in time, if I'm in February, I see December, January, and February, that sum. If I'm in March or I'm in April, I wanna be able to see February, March, and April, that three-month sum. So I wanna see this moving three-month sum. Now, what we get in visual calculations, and the reason people don't think that you can do this, and I keep seeing this, is because we get this ability to do either a run running sum or a moving average. Now the moving average is exactly what I'm looking for, except it's an average, it's not a sum. But if I do running sum like this, and I say, hey, we're gonna do this running sum, and I replace the field right here with my total sales, and I hit enter, we really get exactly that, a running sum all time. It never restarts, it never resets. And so that's what you see right here in the visualization. It just keeps accumulating, and it just keeps growing in number. I can create another visual or calculation, or we can even play with the one that we have. If you look at this, there are optional parameters inside of these visual calculations that we might wanna take a look at. For example, we're gonna say that this is on rows, and for blanks, we're gonna do first. By the way, I can just ignore both of these because rows is the default, how to deal with blanks first. And then I tell it when to reset. So this kind of gives you some functionality and flexibility as far as at least starting this running sum over, but it doesn't give me what I'm looking for. It really gives me more of this kind of month to date, quarter to date, year to date functionality where it completely starts over from zero. So if I say lowest parent, and the lowest parent here is going to be the quarter, because you got your highest parent is year, lowest parent is quarter, and then month is going to be the child or the leaf level. If I hit enter on that, every time I get to a new quarter, as you see right here where my mouse is, it's going to start over. Well, that's great. That Again, that gives me a quarter to date total, but it doesn't really give me a moving sum. So how would we do a moving sum? I'm glad you asked. That's what we're here for. So let's do it very quickly. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new calculation, or I can just click inside the formula bar here, and we'll call this one moving sum equals. Now, there's a function inside of visual calculations. There's a function here called range. And what range does is range retrieves a range of rows within the specified axis. We're gonna specify rows. That's the default. That's where my attributes are relative to the current row. Now it's going to include the current row. So if I say minus one, that's gonna get the current row and the prior row. So now I have two months because I'm at the month level in my report, right? I'd have two months. If I go minus two, it would give me this month and the last two months. So I could do something like minus two. Now this is a, it gives me those rows from the table. I can't just hit enter right now. If I hit enter, we're gonna get an error because it's returning rows. It's not returning a scalar value. It's not returning a sum or an average or anything like that. So now we move on to something else. We move on to my favorite functions in all of DAX, X functions, right? I love X functions. They have so much practicality. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a sum X over this range. So I'm gonna say sum X, and for every row that's in this table that got returned here, this virtual table, which is three rows at all times, I want to sum the total cells. So the X function is gonna iterate over this table, it's gonna get the total cells from each row in this table, and then it's going to sum it up at the end. So if I hit enter now, we just accomplished what many people say you can't do inside of Power BI, inside of visual calculations, which is a moving sum calculation. You'll notice that at the beginning here, it's, you know, it's whatever it is, but as we move on, 
it continues to sum up those totals. It's summing up the total sales. But when we get to April, it drops January and it adds April. When we get to May, the total of what you see in May is the total from May, April, and March, which is the equivalent of $70,000. And that's what we were looking for in this video. If you wanna see more videos like this, more videos on DAX, more videos on Power BI and Azure, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And until next time, have a good time.